There you go. You should be on a new map now. Yep. Much more zoomed out one. Yep. Um, so this is where you are. You're actually up here. There you go. That's where you are. So uh, as you decide that it's time to go, you leave the base and uh, you start heading south through the nearby town because you know that uh, there's a coast to the north, but it lets out onto like a lake. So that's no use to you. Whereas to the south uh, is the ocean. So you can potentially try to rendezvous with uh, your commander and his submarine out there. It's better than waiting around here for nothing to happen. As you're leaving, you do suddenly hear a sound coming through the air. And for a moment, uh, your spirits rise because you think maybe, uh, just maybe, it's the op transport on the way back. Um, but it is not. I'm sure it's nothing. I tell Kane to be quiet. Oh. Uh, you know, he's making all this noise in the air. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Hmm. They all have names. This is trouble. On the horizon, you see the unmistakable shape of the SAF's most hated enemy, the Ivory Garrison. Its young commander, uh, Captain Radiant Lamech, is uh, only 19 years old, but she took over command of the ship when your commander... Uh, failed to steal the arms weir, mortar weir, and tank weir uh, on the space colony where they were being built. And uh, Captain Lamech has been so competent that she has remained in command of the ship despite it being restaffed with more senior officers. Uh, you know that on this ship are the three roving bastions that the THF designed as part of Operation T. The arms weir, which is a, an all-around... Uh, sort of a close quarters combat to medium range combat machine, the mortar weir, a mid range support uh, machine and the tank weir, which nobody really knows why they made it. It's bad, but it is a tank with arms. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, and, it's kind of a loss leader for the rest of the group. Yeah. I mean, it's supposedly long range support, but it rarely accomplishes anything. Um, but it's still there, and boy, it's part of that team, and it's not going to let anyone forget it. Uh, there's also the ace pilot, the ace fighter pilot, Hugger Crime, is stationed on this ship. And uh, the mysterious volume longshoreman is a backup pilot. But the most terrifying people here are the pilots of the Operation T Bastions. Himura Rowe is the young pilot of the arms weir. Her father designed it. She stumbled into it by accident and has become uh, one of the most proficient pilots of the THF. Rex Lightning, another teenager, a self-professed coward and cynic who uh, also ended up with the mortar weir by accident in the state of emergency and is just kind of stuck with it. And the two pilots of the tank weir, because it's so bad it needs two pilots, Maru Shortstack Birdman and Ken Mizuno. Actually, those names are reversed on those pogs. Those should be the other one. I'll fix that. Uh, so you see it approaching. And you can see the Operation T mechs are on its launch pads ready to come for you. I think we should kill all of them. Agreed. Yeah. I think we should just get to the ocean. <laughs> What, uh, kill the ocean? Don't be stupid. <laughs> well, I feel like they want to talk to us and recruit us. We were pretty awesome. But we should kill them. Kill them so that we can claim the glory of having killed them. Yeah. At least try to destroy the arms we are, right? If you two die heroically in the course of stopping them... I will make sure there is a luncheon in your honor. <laughs> oh man, a whole luncheon. I'm well, not a whole <laughs> luncheon. I mean, you'll have to split it. It'll be for both of you. Yeah. 
Hmm. Um. Do uh, radio the arms wear. Prepare to die. Yeah, we're doing it. Don't even give you guys a chance to think about it. Let's do it. I say prepare to die, and then I send you two out to attack first. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes, people are, are mentioning that, oh, it's got the name of the system. Uh, the name of the system is Lancer. Uh, it does have the name of the setting, though. Roving Bastion Armsweer is the name of the setting. So, yeah, it's it's a big deal. <laughs> All right, so, so you... Team hero. I have someone in the chat saying we should parlay and appeal to their teenager life experience and judgment. <laughs> appeal to their... Bad teenager life experience and judgment. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh jeez, you don't, you don't want to negotiate with teenagers. <laughs> I mean, if if there is one group of people susceptible to Alex Jones types, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you say you're planning, or are you planning to run away or should attack? We, whoops. Should we talk to them and then? Uh... And just try to sneak attack them that way? Do you think they want to talk to you, seeing you uh, leaving the ruins of their smoking base? No, I know. Let's just go for it. I'm just, you know, if you feel, uh, if your characters feel that way, I don't want to close that avenue. <laughs> well, I feel like I'd be just like, hi, and, you know, get the guns ready, but just check. We tell them, uh, this place was like this when we got here. Do you guys know what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, let's play that angle. Okay, you can use your laser communicators to point at the ivory garrison and try to get in touch. All right, let's do it. Okay. Uh, so you do that. You don't have to roll for it. It's just you, you laser at it. It's a big target. Um, and you hear a crackling voice come over the laser communicator. This is Captain Lamech of the Ivory Garrison. Surrender now or die. Upon hearing a woman's voice describing <laughs> herself as Captain, uh, <laughs> he no longer has the fear of this, but Cloud still has to suppress vomit. <laughs> There's a lot of kind of like... <laughs> noises. It was a very uh, realistic folly you did there. <laughs> you did vomit. <laughs> yeah, I commit to the bit. Uh, okay, let's go for it. Let's for kill the arms wear. Yeah? I mean, okay. I, I'd rather surrender than die, but... I don't think they're going <laughs> to let us. We should Wasn't, just weren't, attack. Yeah. Weren't those the two options? Well, let, me, let me look at my sheet and see what I have in the way of uh, convincing people. I do have etiquette for some reason uh, and persuasion. Yeah, I mean you're you're a celebrity, so you yeah, automatically I, I get that. celebrity. Etiquette. Do you think uh, I could try to roll to convince them to hand over the arms wear and its pilot to us? <laughs> um, you can attempt to negotiate with the captain if you're willing to talk to her. I'm going to make Kane talk to her while I. What to say? All right. Uh, so, Kane, what? How do you reply to Captain Lamech's ultimatum here? Uh, uh, mighty Commander, what are what? What do you want us to say, Commander? <laughs> Commander, Lieutenant, Colonel Cloud, sir. That's that's Lannister. Cloud's my first name. But <laughs> uh, no, I I say okay. Action that we have just wrought on their empire. Tell them to surrender the arms wear to us. <laughs> Best of them live. Um, uh, yeah, so our commander says that he wrought all of this destruction. Um, I, and that he should duel. Angrier, angrier, tougher, tougher. He should, uh, <laughs> he should duel with the arms wear and the winner walks away <laughs> with the spoils. A duel? Yeah, I mean that's what he said. He, yeah, that's just, what he said. He just, yeah. he just told me to told me to relay this to you. And I was a witness to that event. Very well. Send him out. 
paying attention for this at all. All right. All right. Uh, so, Mr. Is he sir, taking the daily regiment of uh, supplements? Lannister, <laughs> sir. Um, so they they agreed to your terms. You just need to walk out and claim the armswear for yourself. So, I'm just going to loop myself right over here then. I'm just going to take a couple steps over to the other side while this happens. Yep, me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you've come out? Yep. All right. Uh, so the ship uh, fires at you. And let's see how it does. What? A trail. Well, yeah. Captain Lamech's not stupid. Uh, so the ship fires its cannon at you. And let's see where it is here. It's got an aim assist module, so that's good. Gunship cannon, heavy cannon, focus, plus one versus evasion. And do, 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 do. that's the same one. Ah, good. Okay. So, uh, first it is going to attempt to lock on to you, so it needs to beat your E defense with its um, systems, right? Uh, and the Garfield systems are do nine, Garfield. so yep. you are now locked on. And then, as its main action, it fires its cannon at you. Uh, what's its aim? I didn't expect to have to use this vehicle, but I should have. Uh, da, 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 da. No, it doesn't have any extra for that. Okay. And come on, dice. Does eleven hit your agility evasion? Uh yeah. My my agility is ten. Plus one. Right. John, I'm okay. saying to Kane, you said exactly what I told you to say, right? <laughs> uh, you take four damage from the first cannon, uh, and then it fires the second cannon, which takes difficulty to fire. Uh, and misses with that one. So you take uh, a shot from one of the Ivory Garrison's gunship cannons. And that's what happens. Kane replies, yeah, of course, of course I told them that. It's just these, uh, these traitorous hedge money forces, you know, they don't, they don't, their word is not binding like ours. Says, you don't need to tell me that. I just got shot. Anyway, info <laughs> informationconflicts.com will tell you all about what kind of, you know, snakes and dogs these people are. I I blame Kane for being shot. Naturally. Uh, but it is... Uh, but now the three of you... Well, okay. So the... The Operation T units launch... Oh, they were all on board the ship at that time? Yeah. Okay. So they come out here. Out here. Oops. Nobody cares what the tank we're facing. <laughs> I'm just going to put the pilots up here because uh, I don't want to move around all the tokens. And the mortar weir. Okay, so they launch uh, and they touch down. The arms weir dashes forwards uh, towards the Garfield and is drawing its weapons. Um, sorry about that there. The mortar weir is finding something to hide behind. And the tank weir uh, lands on top of, uh, on the side of a, a little bit of a hill there with uh, a wall on it, and its tank treads can't get any purchase, so it just sort of sits there um, running its tank treads, trying to get purchase. All right, and now we go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, now you go. 
All right, I'm uh. Well, first off, Kane, do we want to run or not? Are we? Are we gonna try cutting our losses here? <laughs> oh. Kane's Kane's definitely running. <laughs> it's not. It's not even a question for him. All right, uh, I'm gonna go for it. I was feeling lonely again, so there's only one way I know how to help that. Um. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So I'm gonna hit the boost and run right into the middle of all three of them. Okay. Okay. So boost, I take the shot at um uh, we'll go arms weir on the way in. So that's right. with a pistol. Come on, macro. How how uh, could you? So you, uh, you? You neglected to ask uh, how to disable the safety on your pistol. <laughs> Just one second. I'm going to roll like 10 here and see. Is there something wrong with it? Nope. It's Just bad RNG. <laughs> All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. So uh, safety fails on that. Um, I will attack the arms wear uh, with melee. Say boost in. That's with plus one. Please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you miss. Really? With a 16? Yep. Dang. All right, it and is. I'm gonna. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna take an overcharge. Mm-hmm. And so if I missed with a 16, I think there's only one thing left to do. With my overcharge. I'm gonna overload the reactor. Okay, if that's what you want to do. I'm really close to all of them. <laughs> or actually, you're uh, also you're also still within reactor range of everyone else. Oh, Jesus. That sounds like their problem. Uh, I'm doing it. I'm overloading the reactor. How, how big is this range? It's huge. Uh, let me look up the action overload reactor. It doesn't seventy three. Apparently you need a critical chart, which I can't seem to find. Figure it out. Well, uh, the critical chart should be in the appendices at the end. All right, to overload. Trigger a reactor overload sequence as an action. In D6 rounds, your mech suffers the effects of a reactor meltdown as listed on the critical chart. Uh, if you choose to halt it, you perform an engineering check with plus two difficulty. Successful check will stop the countdown. Uh, so... Uh, if you so if you've triggered your overload sequence, you roll d6. Okay, one and... sec. I have to roll d6 for heat damage. I just took as well. Okay. Oh, great! Solid roll. So three heat or six heat damage. Okay. And then d6 for how many turns? Yeah, how many rounds after this one? Yes. All right. So this <laughs> round, and then after this round, there will be two more rounds. They'll. Uh, your reactor overloads. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. Okay. Do we do we know what the range on that meltdown is yet? Oh, I'll, I'll look it up while the two of you are deciding what you want to do. There. I'm giving you oh, a I've, chance. I've already got the first and second amendment in hand. <laughs> I am just shooting right at the arms weir. Okay. Uh, do I, do I get a bonus from that one? Uh, a bonus three, from? The Truth and Justice talent. The Gunslinger. Uh, if it says you do, then you do. It has at least there. two auxiliary ranged weapons. Yep, you get a plus one. Okay, yeah, these, these are... I'm going to shoot both of them off. Uh, so it's a plus one accuracy. Or just plus one accuracy, not dice. Just plus one. And this is the First Amendment. Okay. Which has failed yet again. <laughs> and... Is also... Okay. So you, you pull out your, your two guns, and you fire the one at the arm swear, and it slashes the bullet out of the air with a beam saber that ignites as it turns towards you. 
and then the second bullet, it moves approximately 20 centimeters to the left in a lean, and the bullet misses. And its eyes um, activate glowing red, and they go... Pdow! Okay, um, anything else you want to do this turn? <laughs> uh, I radio Kane and say, your move, genius. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so Kane is going to dismount out of his, uh, out of his bot. Um, and he's going to start moving this way. <laughs> At least set it to overload, man. <laughs> um, and he's got, of course, he's got his uh, his AI that's in there. Um, his dummy plug, yeah. You know? His dummy plug. Uh, so he's gonna set that to, uh, for now, just to try and lay down some cover fire for his buddies. Well, uh, I I don't really think lose. The dummy plug can shoot. No. Uh, you can check, but I think it can move and interact, but I don't know if it can shoot. Just says basic commands. Let's see. Yeah, we'll stay at can. That's fine. Or just say it's it's motioning like it's shooting, but not actually firing anything. Yeah. Okay. Um. The yeah, it can it can take actions, so it can do actions as long as I command it to do that. So the reactor has a blast three area. Oh, they made it smaller. Okay, so it's oh. just um, <laughs> so it would be. I'll draw a, uh, a shape of where it would burst around you. Let's see, two, two, three. Two. Uh, yeah, about that. All right, uh, so that's what's going to explode two rounds after this one. And so, Kane, you have you have gotten out of your mech and are running <laughs> yep. east, and we're saying the switch. Uh, what are you having it shoot? Uh, so it's going to shoot... Ooh, where did the arms work go? It's right under... It's right next to the geode and above Richard. Oh, I see. All right. Uh, since that's the closest one, it will shoot at the arms weir with its uh, battle rifle. Actually, no. That's got the sniper rifle out already. It'll shoot with the sniper rifle. Okay. And it's impaired, so it takes uh, a difficulty die. On... Yep. Would we say that since he's using his AI, in this case, his AI specialist would uh, give him an advantage? No, because this isn't a full AI. All right. If you want to fight well in your mech, you have to be in your mech. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. No, yeah, I don't think that's going to be them. It shoots a uh, it shoots a bullet, and the bullet flies off and blows up a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Take that tree. It was a the very nice Gundam. tree. That would have been a shot that. of like. The tree gets shot and falls on like a monkey. <laughs> During yeah. the horrors of war. Indeed. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so that's the end of your turns this round? Mm hmm. Yep. Okay. So that brings us to the end of this round, um, at which point the Ivory Garrison, which locked onto the Garfield earlier, fires its missiles uh, at Garfield, doing. Seven, seven damage to the Garfield. Is it alive? Zero. To zero? Okay, so you're in critical mode, in critical condition. I'm just going to copy and paste the cataclysmic reactor detonation thing into the discords. So see what it is. I mean, normally I'd feel bad about my character having all of their hit points drained, but... 
<laughs> like, yeah, okay. Yeah, it seems fitting comment. enough. Yeah. Okay, uh, what was I checking? Critical condition. What is critical condition? Damage and critical damage. Uh, 56. Okay, if your max HP is ever reduced to zero or below, you do not immediately... Instead, you enter the critical state. When you're in the critical state, any damage you take, including the damage that put you in that state, will force you to roll on the critical damage chart with a bonus equal to your current critical damage. So how far below zero did that take you, if at all? We had zero. Pardon? I'm, I'm right on zero. Okay, so roll 1d20... Try and go back to that critical table so we can see what your tells us. I feel like I'm having my horoscope read. <laughs> there are so many tables in the tables section and no working bookmarks. So I'm just going to scroll all the way down, all the way past every piece of equipment to the critical damage table. At okay. this point, I Rolled say, eight. I just did this eight. so you guys could run, by the way. You can turn it off anytime you want. No, I don't have good engineering. Okay, direct hit, weapon or system. The attack connects with a non-core system or weapon chosen by the attacker. The chosen system or weapon is destroyed. Uh, the First Amendment explodes. Well, we all knew it was going to happen someday. Yeah, it's hard not to read between those lines. All right, uh, so that is that for this round. And that brings us back to uh, the Ivory Garrison crew's turns. So the Armsweer um, seems to have received a message, and it turns and attempts to um, destroy the geode before it can have its reactor overload. And it's got two rounds in which to do it. Joke's on it, I have plus one armor. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so it rolled a 15, uh, which I believe hits your evasion. Yep. And does... 8 damage. 7. 7 damage. As it uh, carves into your mech with its beam sword. Uh, the mortar weir, uh, on hearing that the uh, reactor is overloading, uh, runs away. Out of range. Hey, wait, do I get an attack of opportunity on it? You absolutely do, yes. Yes! To the last I shall grapple with thee. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath at thee. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> Uh, Why? <laughs> as you are turning to attack the mortar weir, uh, the arms weir uh, is still grappling with your thermal lance and manages to turn it aside before you're able to uh, stab it into Rex's back. Desper, uh, uh, your so macro after... sucks. <laughs> Blaming your tools. Uh, so after it runs away. It turns and uh, sort of hits the deck, and the two cannons on its back fire, um, and they fire over the battlefield to attack the uh, drone-piloted switch. So it shoots its mortars at you. And... Taking a while to roll these bones. 12 hits the switch's evasion. So it does. How much damage? Let's see. 3 damage to the switch. 
uh, the tank weir is still stuck on that little fence that's gummed up its uh, its wheels, so it can't move. Um, but the pilots within uh, have decided to try and make the best of a bad situation and <laughs> to shoot at you with its uh, with its it has instead of hands like it has arms, but the arms don't have hands on them. Uh, <laughs> So it's a tank with a head and arms, and the arms have more guns at the ends of them. Uh, so it, it shoots its machine gun arm, machine gun hands at uh, at Geode. Oh. Uh, minus one because we're at melee range? Yeah. It takes uh, two difficulty dice, first because it's at melee range, and second because it's pitched at an angle with which it is not comfortable. So let's see how it does. Oh, I'm sorry. It still manages to hit you. It rolled a 20. <laughs> Why did it roll a 20? <laughs> uh, Pilots are just that good. Yeah. Okay. And uh, from that, you take you take zero damage. <laughs> oh, tank weir. <laughs> it tried. I love how it like hit the mech right in between the eyes. <laughs> Uh, it's so useless. Um, but it does swivel its stunted torso. Uh, and did you put that damage on the switch, John? Did John leave? Nope, John's here. <laughs> did you put the damage on the switch from the previous attack? No, I missed that. Uh, you took three damage from the mortar weir firing its mortars. At Alrighty. Not you, the pilot who is running away, but uh, you, the switch. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> and the tank rear swivels and fires its uh, heavy cannons. It's got a pair of them over its shoulders, 180 millimeter uh, cannons at the switch, causing anyone watching to wonder, uh, why is this thing not just a tank? see how it does Ooh. it misses entirely uh the shell flies past the switch and explodes worryingly close to kane the human oh, pilot <laughs> <laughs> spending dirt and rocks pelting you uh what an ironic way to go that would be <laughs> the damage <laughs> that it caused uh all right and the ivory garrison itself um pulls back until it's essentially just out of range because Captain Lamech is a jerk like that. Um, and that is the end of the round. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's still locked onto the Garfield. Oh, of course. Uh, let me see if it ends. Auxiliary smart launcher range 10. Oh, it's no longer in range though. So it cannot shoot at you again this turn. So that brings I'm, us... I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be fixing that on my turn. Okay, well it's your turn. Well, so I, in my wisdom, I'm going to, if I can, to the tank weir and grab hold of it and threaten to tip it over onto its back if the pilots <laughs> don't jump out and let me take their their uh, roving Oops. bastion. All right, so you're going to try and sorry, you're going to try and jump to onto which? The bad one. Yeah, my chat the, is also the... really clamoring to hijack the tank weir. Okay, so you're going yep, to go it's got and tank in the name. Hijack it. Okay, that's fine. That makes it the strongest um, map. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, so I I am going to unfortunately that takes me like right by the arms weir currently. It does, unfortunately. Um, okay. Let me just make sure that I have. I only hope this. that Kane, still inside the Switch D, is providing good cover. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so you've gone to the tank where. Are you going to get out of the Garfield and jump oh, onto I'm, the tank? I'm like... going to try to use the heavily damaged Garfield to threaten to flip it if, it does, if the pilots don't leave. 
Oh, okay. So you're just threatening to bully it, to push it over. <laughs> I'm threatening to, like, push it down the hill <laughs> if the pilots don't exit the tank wheel. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's use... Uh, let's do a roll for that, and let's use one of your... Uh, one of your character things, because you've got leader. Um, so you have leadership dice that you can be using. I feel like celebrity would factor into this as well. They'd be more intimidated. These young impressionable teenagers. Yeah, you, you've got the persu <laughs> you've got the persuasion field, uh, and you're short tempered. So uh, you're going to make a roll with uh, two advantage dice, because uh, your temper is scary, and you are charismatic, not in the like fun way, but in the like oh Darth Vader way, <laughs> uh, and you have a reputation for being unhinged and violent, so they are very likely to believe your threats. What is it? One d twenty, and then the advantage dice are d six. Yeah, and two of those, so one d twenty plus two d six. Here goes nothing. Yay! Like All there's right. a high saving roll to, for like you know. No, there's there's no saving rolls for this. Um, okay. Terrified, um, Ken, uh, and Maru, they both sort of huddle up in the torso of the tank weir together. There's there's two cockpits. There's the regular tank cockpit for driving it around, and the torso cockpit for the guns. Uh, they hover together in the torso cockpit, and they hit the eject switch. Um, and let me see here. I, I made a table for this. Okay. Let me check that. Uh, okay. The torso of the tank works. weir... <laughs> the torso of the tank weir uh, sort of pops off. It looks like it was meant to rocket away. Um... <laughs> But it doesn't. <laughs> it just pops off and rolls down the hill. Uh, the whole stuff of the machine. Just don't, 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 don't. We've um, done it. So the 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 tank treads, and the sort of body of the tank that doesn't have any weapons on it is is yours for the taking. So I take it. <laughs> All right. So you you leave the Garfield and you get into the uh, essentially convertible tank now. Yeah, you got the rag top down so your hair can blow. Set the Garfield to... I mean, I don't know if I can do that on this turn, though. Uh, can I set the Garfield to blow so that no one else can have it? Yeah, man, I you, don't can want... over, you can overload and then uh, set the reactor to overload after. You can set it to overload, but if you do that, you can't get into the tank this turn. Okay. That's too many things. Okay, so, well, I'll, I'll get into the tank next turn after I set this one to blow up. Yeah! Okay, you do that, so roll your d6. <laughs> uh, yeah! Okay, so, after this round, in two more rounds, uh, your <laughs> field will explode. Back-to-back self-destruct so rounds! Okay, um, Kane, what does the Switch's dummy plug do? You told it to shoot, so it's just going to keep shooting, I guess. Yep. Yeah, it's going to... Well, it's it's got to reload this turn. Oh, okay. It reloads. Anything else it does, or is that... Um, no. Maybe, huh? yeah. It'll just hang okay. out there. It's just been Hangs given... Out. It's it's a pretty dummy dummy plug, so it's just like, shoot, reload, shoot, reload. Okay. Uh, and Kane's going to continue to scamper down this river here towards the ocean. Okay. Uh, and once once they get there, they're gonna do whatever they can to try and get a hold of uh, our beautiful frog boat. Yeah. Okay. Passing the speedboat, old drugs or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my turn. Uh, yep. All right, I'm going to ram the arms weir. Okay, go for it. Uh, what, I rolled just a d20 on that. Yes, you do. And, okay. 
Can I incorporate some of my skills? Into ramming? Yeah. What skill do you want to incorporate? Dude, this is the one thing that actually is like mining. I put my shoulder into it. Yeah, why not? All right. I'll let an advantage dice for that. Eighteen? Okay. Yeah, you hit it. Nice. The arm square is knocked prone. All right, and the reactor is ticking away. And at this moment, how hard is it for it to get back up? Uh, it takes a move action to get up. A full action? I think so, but I'm not 100% sure. And it's very difficult to search this document. All <laughs> so right. I'm just going to say yeah. it'll take her full move to get up. Okay. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overcharge take an extra action yeah and gonna stabby stab well okay i'll take the we'll do the d6 first all right so what happens now that i'm into the negatives for heat uh you shut down oh the mech shuts down yeah when you are full when your heat is full you shut down oh there's I, um there's an overheat that. table isn't there yeah, I thought you took, like, damage or something. I think there's a table for it. Oh, I thought it was shutting down. Let me look at the tables. Right, right below the critical damage table is a heat table. I may redact that. I'm just trying to keep it on the ground as long as I can. Okay, so... Um, you roll a d20 at plus however much heat you are, your maximum. And I take that as damage? Nope, there's a there's an effect table. Okay, so whoops, roll d20, and then I'm I would be negative one, so I'd be twelve, I guess. Twelve total. Yeah. Okay. A random system is disabled. Okay. Let me just take a look at your systems, see how many of them there are. And I will roll a dice. So you have got. You've got two weapons. You have got smoke grenades. And a pistol as well. Got your jump jet system on top of that. Okay. Uh, it disables your one, two, three, four, five. No, the armor is in a system, so D4. Let's find out what it disables. Not the music. Uh, no, not the music. It disables your thermal lance. Oh, well, I've been missing a lot with that thing. But yeah, do we really notice a difference? <laughs> right. Cool. Alright, and that's the end of your round yep that's it okay also so... since i'm at negative one heat so it can keep going negative right uh, it can keep going negative and you keep rolling table perfect because the more uh you're into the red on that the more powerful an explosion when your reactor overloads yeah there's a critical reactor overload option yep we're all going to hell and we're gonna go straight to the bottom <laughs> oh, came, some people in the came. chat are like, Richard hasn't ejected yet. He died in that mine six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you uh, get out and... Or no, you don't get out. That's the end of your turn. Yep. And Kane, you see emerging from the sea, uh, your commander's bastion. Oh, is no! Uh, the testy frogfish was coming to evac you. They had heard that the yop had been shot down by the uh, ivory garrison as it was on its way to investigate what was going on at the uh, P base. And he has arrived to see this mess that you have created. <laughs> <laughs> created and perpetuated. Yeah. Uh, so he... He's got three times the regular movement speed. 
there. That. Oh, Seer, thank goodness you're here. I was just coming yeah. to get you so that they would know. I have nothing but trust in your capability, Kane. <laughs> I suspected that you would choose this route and continue to trust that you are working towards my best interest. And the Doughboy charges in and uh, attempts to stomp on the arms weir uh, with its mecha foot. Well, aren't I, like, on says, top of it right now? Not that I have a problem with this. Yeah, it's trying to stomp on its head. Okay. Are you covering its head as well? No, no. I think I okay. went for the body. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> Someone tries to tell land. about the reactor. <laughs> <laughs> the two reactors. <laughs> should, we, should we alter the, uh, the polygon here to cover the Garfield explosion, too? <laughs> you probably should. Uh, let's just see what happens. Nature take its course. Uh, I want to clarify one other thing. So when a reactor overloads, it does heat damage. And the heat damage escalates the damage a reactor overload does. Yeah, so I'm trying to overheat whole... mine as much, which is going to overheat the Garfield, which is going <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> we could have uh, something really sure. special. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he lands on the arms rear successfully. And it's unarmed damage, so uh, he does one damage that the arms rear takes. Because it doesn't have very good armor, it's just good at not getting hit. Why can't I click on it? Uh, I think I know why. Because it knows what I'm doing and hates it. Okay, uh, so the Doughboy has arrived, and you receive a tight beam message from uh, your commander. and says, Parker, <laughs> are you trying to destroy everyone? <laughs> I'm trying to save the team. Also, I'm kind of committed now. I, I really am not good at shutting down this overload, and it's uh, pretty difficult to do. Parker, can you shut down your reactor, please? Well, if I fail on my next turn. <laughs> and he's just he's dot, uh, dot, dot. standing there with his foot on the arms where his head. And uh, he also pulls out his uh, beam rifle. The Doughboys have beam rifles that are not as powerful as the uh, THF ones, but the Doughboys, the top of the line and uh, it fires at the mortar weir as well. And hits. And the mortar weir takes some damage. Three damage to the mortar weir, and it has some armor, so... Uh, and my son is home, so... <laughs> <laughs> I will see you in a minute. All right. Playing the part of the motor wear tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, hey, buddy. So, just to clarify, I'm totally going through with this meltdown. I am. I already have my next move planned. Once I get into the useless tank wear. All right. So we're we're gonna go with the chain <laughs> reaction here. We're all we're all on board. I'll uh. Yeah. I'll, re I'll remotely send the Switch D into the <laughs> reactor meltdown, too. Nice. Uh, and, uh, Kane, you're going to have to live for the three of us. Someone's got to tell the story of what happened here. That's right. The Night of a Thousand Suns. <laughs> and if the Gundam cartoon, just in, like, the first episode, had done something like this. <laughs> All of these new characters, and three idiots blew them up. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so that's what the Doughboy does. It fires on the Mortar Weir. Uh, is that four damage? So it takes three. Twelve. There we go. Uh, and he fires his auxiliary weapon, a beam pistol, at 
Where is he shooting that? Uh, he can only shoot it at either the tank weir, which he sees is disabled, or at the arms weir. So. He could shoot at the top part of the tank weir rolling down the hill. <laughs> Add some He's momentum not... to it. <laughs> He's not so petty. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn off my mic for a bit. <laughs> Just on the stream, it's off. Okay, and uh, yeah, so that misses. All right, so the stream can't hear me right now, but you can. Um, I am all for you overloading your mechs, by the way. <laughs> I'm perfectly happy for that to happen. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so. It's, it's yeah. happening whether you wanted it or not. Yeah, so the question is if you can survive the next round until your uh, mech explodes, we'll see what happens. Uh, all right. Talking while you were saying hi to, uh, to the family and basically pointing out, uh, Matt, that this is like. This is like if the first episode of Zeta Gundam had like Jared Mesa and like a bunch of other idiots just like blow up Bright Noah and Camille. And everyone. Yeah, it sounds about right. Oh, he's got his stuffed toy, so maybe he'll. They just got home from visiting uh, my uh, brother and sister-in-law, and their and his cousin. So he's he's pretty wound up. You can blame him. Yeah, I know. All right, and I'm here. Okay, so it's going to be their turn again. You saying night night? Okay. Okay, folks, uh, sorry for the interruption, but no problem. You know, that's the nature of a 24-hour live stream at a certain point. You know, we've got families. So you're saying the audience had it coming? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so um, it's now the Ivory Garrison's team's turn again, and they are not happy at the idea of the geode exploding and uh, possibly killing uh, Birdman and Mizuno and also at least heavily damaging and possibly killing uh, Imura and the flagship Armsweir. So they are doing everything they can to stable the geode. Oh, bring it on. So the mortar weir is going to fire at you with its beam rifle. And it takes a negative because uh, you are in melee range. Come on, Geode. Uh, cool. Okay. Unfortunately, it still hits. <laughs> All right. How much damage? We are about to find out. Uh, 48. Two. Oh, three. Oh, sorry. Uh, four. Yeah, so three in total. Uh, I'm really glad I, mean, I took that armor. <laughs> if, if they do enough damage to you, then it just goes super critical anyway, and that's what we really want, isn't it? Yeah, well, at the end of my turn, or at the end of the next round, I think. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay, uh, and it fires its auxiliary weapon as well. Where is its auxiliary weapon? Oh, man, I've been ignoring all of its reactions and interactions. Whoops. Anyway, the Mortar Weir is actually pretty good if I were playing it properly. <laughs> uh, so it shoots uh, its head guns at you. It's 
got little guns in its head next to its eyes. Um, like little little machine gun kind of thing, submachine guns. Head submachine guns, that's what they're called. No copyright infringement here. Brain Uzis. Yeah, brain <laughs> Uzis. I can't hear you, Matt. I just said brain Uzis out of nowhere. <laughs> this for fun. Um, I think that still hits your evasion. Yeah, just barely. Okay. All right. Let's see how it does with that. Tink. Yeah. Pointless, pointless waste of its time and ammunition. But uh, Rex is trying at least. He doesn't want his friend to die. Uh, he won't specify which of the three people in imminent danger is his friend, though. He just perfectly <laughs> transmits. Oh, I don't want my friend to die. <laughs> And everyone's too busy to ask him who he's talking about. Uh, okay. Two fighters launch from the ivory garrison. That's and right. Let's... Swarm me. Uh, let's see if they can lock on to you. I think that hits your systems. Uh, so they've locked on to the geode. And it's the the tank we are team is useless. Uh, so Maru and Ken are crawling out of the top half of it and are trying to run out of the blast radius. It's tough for them because they have tiny human legs as opposed to the great powerful tank treads they're used to driving around <laughs> on. Okay, the arms weir is uh, pinned between two opponents, uh, but it is only in imminent danger from one of them. So, um, Imra is roaring in rage and attempts to stab directly through your cockpit with her uh, beam saber. Who's you? Me? Yes, you, the All geode. Right. Now, in this situation, uh, one of my customizations is full view, like 360 de degree screenage. Of everything yeah. that's going around the tank or the the mech so um in the event that it could stab through i know which way to lean to avoid the fatal blow sorry you know which like so i like i would be able to physically move out of the way if it's like cutting through the left side or the top or so on you're cutting in and out you'd be able to physically move out of the way and i would be able to physically move out of the way just of the beam attack so if she cut the left half i could get out of the way of the left half Okay. I'm saying let's she can't she kill can. me. She can cut the cockpit, but she can't kill me. All right. Let's see what she can do. Plus one, two, six. Okay. She does hit you. And she does. Come on, one. Five damage. All right, I'm at negative one. Okay, so roll a d20 plus one. I think I can just say plus one there. Twelve. Okay, let's see what that is. On the critical damage table. I think the twelve is the same one that we got before. Um, staggered, you are struck by a well-placed or lucky shot. Temporarily overwhelming the cockpit's shock absorption systems. Makes sense. The force, the force of the hit rattles you and tips you to the side. Your mech is knocked prone. You are dealt plus 1d6 heat in addition to normal damage. Because she was on her back and encumbered, does she take a penalty to any of this? Because uh, she did yeah, start I the turn on do... her back. Yeah, you're right. I should take a penalty die for her attack. So 11 still hits... Um, let's see what how much heat you take. Three heat, and right. negative four heat right now. Yeah, and so now you're on the overheating table. The beginning of any turn when you're overheating. So when we get to your turn, uh, you'll roll on the overheating table. Okay. All right. So she essentially she stabs you and uh, maybe cuts off one of your mech's arms. Um, 
when that happens, because she's tried to get your cockpit, but you're able to get out of the way of that. So instead it cuts off one of the arms, and the arm thuds to the ground. And then she sort of gets the arms where his legs up under you and uh, kicks you so that you're on your back. And she takes her move action to stand up. And then she attempts to shoot you execution style. <laughs> Bring uh, it on. With her, with her rifle. Or, yeah, with her rifle. She is very angry right now. Good. <clears throat> Let's see if she can do it. Nope. She is not able to hit you with that attack. And then, because she's very angry, she shoots you with her brain Uzi as well. And misses you with that. So the geode, you're able to, like, sort of crawl and claw your way out of the way of these assaults. It's because I got Survivor. The, <laughs> the sheer skill of your, of your power. Uh, okay, the Ivory Garrison... Uh, fires on the Garfield, which is back in range. What was its dude? Plus one. Uh, are you... Oh, you haven't gotten out of it yet, so you're still in it. I haven't gotten out of it yet, no. Uh, but it misses. It fires its secondary cannon. And it misses again. Okay. And that's the end of the Ivory Garrison turn. What do you all want to do? The action, I think, is obvious. I'm going to get out of the Garfield. Yep. Weird. And immediately try to make a break for Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so are you getting into the tank weir to do that? Or? The the crappy just tank portion. Assuming it's not stuck on the hill. Which, if it is, that's cool too. Uh, it's not, but it's it's stuck on a wooden fence. So you'd have to get it off that. With like a little little roll. I'm, I'm game for whatever I have to do. Okay, so you leap into the tank weir, and we'll just do a d20 roll to see if you can pilot it off the fence. <laughs> yeah! You do it! You get it off the fence. This is how you back something up with a trailer. Backing up, and it's just doing that slow, like, beep, beep, beep <laughs> thing in the middle of this pitched firefight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The intense amount of sweat and, and like grease on his face and chest. Is his shirt still on somehow or is, is well, the shirt gone? is like open all the way to his navel and he is right. just drinking he's just <laughs> popping pills right from the bottle at this point. He's just pouring them in his belt. What an awful man. Okay, uh so you can take the tank weir's move action. Uh it is capable of moving one square. Just keep going south. Yeah, so you can... People to think is that I died in the Garfield, and then I can... I have a lot of tax debt. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is, this is uh, the Cloud Lannister way of escaping all that. Uh, the, the Lannisters in this game do not pay their debts. <laughs> I guess you can take a boost action, and, and you get one more square of movement. Uh, okay, and the Garfield is there uh, overloading range of the yeah. Garfield killing so. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay. gonna make it so what do the what do the other two of you do uh, I've got my turn yep all right uh, so start with rolling on the heat table oh yeah that's right d20 d plus four. Fourteen. Fourteen. Yes, get hotter. Hot as the flames of hell. A random weapon is disabled. Well, I, okay, so it's either the pistol or... 
Yeah, it, I guess the pistol is disabled. All right, because I still have I still have my blade. All right. All right, we lose the okay, pistol. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um. From my back, so to stand up is that just a move action? Yeah. All right. So I stand up. Uh, do they get an attack of opportunity if I do that? I'm not gonna say they do. No. All right. Uh, and then I ram the arm swear again. Okay. Are you planning? Are you trying to ram it into the commander's doughboy? Uh, no, just right back down into the ground. Okay. Uh, the commander is is still very calmly <laughs> asking you to disable your <laughs> reactor override <laughs> and retreat with him. Uh, that's just not how I saw this whole thing going down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's just, you know, that's who he is. He's like, you know, any time we can just disable that reactor and we <laughs> won't lose this very expensive piece of technology that you're piloting. Have you seen uh, just So I Married back an into the... Yes, I've you, seen it. The police chief? The mm -hmm. ridiculously compassionate police chief? chief. Yeah. Well, I don't really get yelled at that... by a commissioner because I report to a committee. <laughs> You're like asking that in character to Seer. <laughs> 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 yes richard of course it's mandatory viewing for all officers in the essay all right uh and let me just check it's one of the few movies from this uh this era that survives <laughs> all right so i'm gonna pour i'm gonna say because i'm overloading my mech this qualifies as demolition <laughs> So can that somehow assist my very last minute? Because we're right at the point of reload. I've got my 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 music collection still functional, playing me my final song. Yeah. Um. I mean, technically I've got survival, but in my mind I'm trying to survive to the end of this turn and take the arms we're with me. You're trying to. And then mechanics and grease monkey combined. I'm pushing the machine that's falling apart to its very final limit. You're pushing the machine, that's what? Well, all to just pour my soul into succeeding this roll. You're succeeding your ram attack. Yeah. Okay. With mechanics, demolition in the exploding suit, survivorship, grease monkey, everything. Everything I am. How many dice did that net me? Uh, well, two. Why not? All right. D20 plus 2D6. Come on, 30. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you strike the uh, arms weir. And we're, sorry, were you just ramming it? Just ramming it right into the ground. I attempt okay. to put that thing into a mine. All right. So you ram it into the ground. It, it slams into the ground again. It's, you, with ram, you can knock them over, or you can you can also push them uh, a distance equal to your reach. And I want that's to what push, ram does because I've got a critical twenty or a natural yeah. twenty plus bonuses on top of that. Can I like push her into the ground? Because like, uh, I got like, my jump jets going, full blast yeah. on the back, like sure, push her, like not? a meter into the ground. We're just like burying this thing. Yeah, just like it. I was buried. And the, uh, it, uh, it sinks into the ground as you slam into it. All right. And you can hear, while you're in contact with the mech, you can hear the pilot, Imru Ro, uh, screaming invective at you. Excellent. And for symbolic significance, can we say the, feet, the, the hole we've pushed is exactly six feet deep? Sure, why not? All right. Also, because uh, of the way that you struck the arms where its arms flung out to either side. So it's also a cruciform <laughs> indentation in the earth. Yes. <laughs> ah, perfect anime symbolism. I end my turn. Okay. Uh, all right. So, right. And was there anyone else that has to go on this team? Okay. Uh, yeah, we haven't done anything yet. Um, so I think all he wants to do is just order the switch D to cover Sierra Doughboy's escape. 
or the Sears Doughboy escape. Because, um, mm -hmm. you know, everyone else seems to either be running for Mexico or pretty much, like, pooched at this point. I did it for you, Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'll go back home. I'll always remember. <laughs> um, and Kane's going to continue to move his way towards the testy frogfish, which I assume is around where the seer came out of. Um, and the switch D is just going to be um, trying to shoot anything that's coming after the seer. So it's, I guess, uh, readying an action for that. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just going to scream in to his laser comm for the, the seer to get out of there. Things are about to go nuclear. All right. Uh, seer is saying, yes, I'm I'm aware of the situation. Uh, <laughs> if you could get the, if you could just get the your switch back to the back to the submarine, that'd be great. And uh, he resumes turning around and he's looking down at uh, Richard and the arms we're um, battling each other and he just sort of lets out a sigh and it's like ah, I suppose the Garfield is set to explode as well it'll be very inappropriate uh, fortunately though uh, let me see if I can just yeah I will just go down here and uh, he goes down and he touches the Garfield's shoulder and the machine just turns off because he installed an override knowing that <laughs> <laughs> uh, knowing what cloud, kind of person cloud is <laughs> was a very unstable and anger prone individual <laughs> so the garfield just shuts down and you you hear and you see the single eye that's in the doughboy's uh head there sweep over the tank weir and very clearly see your sweaty bod in it uh but he does nothing about it uh so that's the end of that turn uh, the geode, the fighters, I'm treating them as drones, essentially. So they locked on to you. They will each do some damage to you. Come on. Uh, so you take four damage. Three. Okay, and uh, I believe that means you have to roll on the critical chart again. Yep, I'm at negative four hit points now. Okay. One interesting thing about the system is that it's very hard to die. Well, I'm finding a way. <laughs> <laughs> You're really trying hard, yeah. Well, I didn't think backup was going to come. <laughs> All right, so 1d20 plus 4. So, 14. Okay. On a 14, direct hit weapon or system uh, connects with a non-core system or weapon chosen by the attacker. The chosen system or weapon is destroyed. I mean, I you don't have a lot of... It, it destroys your jump jets. Oh, I There you I'm... go. Okay. Because I still have my, my blade. Um, yeah, I know. But okay. I think you should. I think you should keep that for dramatic uh, reasons. <laughs> okay. So your, your jump jets are disabled. Uh, all right. And is that the end of the round? It is the end of the round. Oh, right. Um, the ship also hits you because it locked onto you. Okay. We're going to get you to explode somehow or another day. <laughs> if it takes uh, us all you night. Another three damage, so we're all on the critical chart. D20 Dude, plus seven. Like negative six hit points. Roll D20. Here it comes. All right. All right. Uh, nine. Nine. A very mild result for all that. Uh, component tagged. A random non-core weapon or system in your mech is destroyed. You were additionally dealt... 1d6 heat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Come on, six. Yes. Okay. Uh, is this... So, let's see. Was it two rounds ago that you triggered your... Yeah, heat? this is it. Yeah. This is it. Okay. Oh, wait. So, that's negative 10 heat? 
And uh, I took three damage, so yeah, negative nine HP. Okay. All right, so uh, I guess at this point your your blade does does get destroyed. Oh. And uh, you take one heat because that's the the other part of it. All right. Uh, negative eleven heat. Excellent. All right, let's get ready to have a meltdown. The thing is, with it, with the this thing so overheated, he's still not as sweaty as Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, but like a gland problem. All right, let's uh, let's do these rolls. I'm gonna pull this out. All right. Do, do, do. You are here, so the arms we're. Um, oh, did the did you take your turn this round, Cloud? I don't think so. I mean, I'm just gonna keep keep driving and driving. Okay, so you go there and there. Get shot by the ivory garrison. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the protagonist's arms weir is within your blast range. The disabled Garfield is within your blast range, and you are within your blast range. Now, at this point, I would like to mention I have a spare hard suit in the cargo. Can I double up to try to survive? A spare what? Hard suit. Uh, I don't think you can put a hard suit on top of a hard <laughs> suit. Just checking. All right. <laughs> Just got that other one a couple of sizes too big. Just yeah. so kid. All right. Well, he, he, the he had a lot of weight problems a couple of years ago, and he's really slimmed down. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here we go. You're in critical state. Any damage you take, all one critical damage access to damage below zero. For example, five, six, six, five. Yeah, we know. Okay. Critical damage crew is cumulative through the encounter. So at yes, this moment, I'd I like to that. take. My, my my space Swiss Army knife and set it on the dash. I'll put up my deck of cards and I'll take the, the photo of the guy I st whose throat I slit. Just gonna set it on the dash as well. <laughs> oh, this is the worst. Okay. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> This, this okay. campaign really took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> Is this how you imagined it? Okay. The reactor goes critical. You die. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. As uh, we get that shot where all of the uh, all of the all of the color bleeds out <laughs> of this of the scene as the explosion happens and then the the at the photo and, and holding on to it and as you are looking first the color bleeds out and then the line art the the black line art sort of is uh rusts and flakes away uh in the force of the blast that takes your life um what's the last thing that you see or think before you disappear from this world i think i'm going back to the mine Okay. Yep. Uh, I am going to roll the agility check for the arms weir. Where is the where are the stats for that? Okay, it has plus four on agility, but it's pounded into the ground, so I'm going to give it a minus one difficulty. Ah! Haha! Uh -huh. It does not pass its agility <laughs> check. <laughs> so you have caught it in the explosion. Now let's roll the agility check for the dummy plug in the Garfield. <laughs> Actually, wait, I need to pick a more appropriate wait, song. Wait, isn't, isn't, isn't the Garfield shut down, though? You're right, it is shut down, so it doesn't get anything. Uh, There's Seer. Seer is outside the range. Oh, no, but I'm saying, you know. Yeah, yeah, he set it down. Now it's going to blow up anyway. 
It might, we'll see. Okay, so the arms rear does not pass its difficulty check, so it takes the damage. 3d6 of heat and 2d6 explosive. Come on, big rolls. Just put on one winged angel for my chat. <laughs> Alright, so she takes uh, 10 heat. Why is it not letting me damage this? Oh, because I'm in the wrong one again. I have two windows of this open. One is the GM window. One... Right. So that exactly zeroes out her heat. And then she takes... Seven explosive damage as you explode. Bro, only seven. What about the overflow heat? Let's see. I'm doing this one step at a time because there's a lot to go through. <laughs> Add the excess heat that the mech had before exploding to both this heat damage and the explosive damage. There we go. So you had 11 excess heat, right? Yes, I did. All right. On Set a mech with in. a capacity for nine. So are you turning into a robot again? Oh, I was just proud that I had more negative heat than my potential positive limit. <laughs> Minus four. Heat. Minus ten. So let's roll on her. First for the critical chart. Plus, no, 1d20. Plus four for the critical chart. Okay, a 12 on the crit, which, as I recall, means that a, okay, mech is now crippled, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, so we'll say one of the arms weir's legs is blown off, and on the overheat chart, plus 10, this will be a good one. 16 on the overheat chart, which is weapon short. A random weapon is disabled. Oh. Uh, her her uh, particle beam rifle uh, sputters out and explodes uh, next to her, also taking out uh, her arm. So the arms weir has, in grand mecha tradition, lost a leg and an arm. Climactic battle. There's yeah, a there price gouging like, joke in there somewhere. Well, it's it's just the arm weir now. It's not arms weir anymore. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One scene in Robocop. Now we are going to do the Garfield. I'm just going to take the old geode and uh, take it off the map now. Yeah, it's it's gone. So but not Garfield. forgotten. No, never forgotten. How could it ever be after... Uh, after that. So Garfield takes the same uh, damage that I already rolled, so it takes 19, no, uh, six, uh, 17 hit points damage. That brings it to negative 17, and we'll roll on its critical chart. Twenty-eight. That's good. Dang. Got that high. <laughs> All right. Cascading systemic overload. Mech is destroyed due to catastrophic system failure and pilot. Yay! Pilot must off check off a trait but survives. Mech is now destroyed. Um, it doesn't have an over a core overload reaction though. It's just destroyed. No. Oh. Oh. When I'm not is. inside of it. That's true. Uh, yeah, you're not there, so you've you've survived. Okay. The catastrophic explosion uh, sends a mushroom cloud into the atmosphere, seeding this area with radioactive particles and maxillin particle uh, 
oversaturation for decades to come. <laughs> nothing can live here. No communications can get through. Nothing will grow here for many centuries uh, well into the future. The catastrophic the scale of the destruction uh, is the legacy that um, the former miner Richard Parker left behind, a testament to his loneliness, his desire to take others with him to the grave, which was unfortunately never fully realized. Uh, the uh, Ivory Garrison aboard that, they are terrified <coughs> terrified that Imra might be dead, so they uh, fly into the zone along with the arms we're rushing in there. Um, nobody knows what happened to Maru or Ken, if they escaped in time or not. Uh, no one can tell at this point. But uh, Sears, uh, Seer rather, not Sears, Seer uh, retreats rather than get entangled in any more of this mess. But he's got a little smile on his face as he does and returns to the uh, testy frogfish. Uh, but he reaches down and picks up. Uh, <laughs> he reaches down into the open top of the tank <laughs> <laughs> and picks up um, oh jeez Cloud sort of Lannister yeah Cloud Lannister as he returns yes, only, only the most original name I yes come up with and he says I'm not done with you yet Lieutenant Command as he retreats into the waves and I assume Kane and the switch also retreat mm. to the testy frogfish that one's going to finish off the arms weir well, no I mean the ship is still there the mortar weir is still there. The fighters are still there. They're still greatly outnumbered. There's lots of mechs left to blow up. The, the switch will take a <laughs> pot shot out of it as it's retreating with the sniper rifle. Unsuccessful. The switch fires, the sw the, the, the switch fires at the six-foot hole in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> where the arms were lies beneath the debris that used to be uh, the geode. Okay. And that brings an end to roving bastion arms wear. most of you survived yay it, i think this was as successful as on with these characters <laughs> 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 i feel like one horrible death uh due to blowing oneself up an honorable death to be fair another An extremely... one and two party members attempting to flee <laughs> uh, is about as good as we're going to get. <laughs> yeah, Richard was really determined to blow up. <laughs> I mean, we all have to have dreams. Yeah. yeah. Look, do people want to watch uh, the speed limit or do we want to have some fun? No, that was great. It's just that this system makes it so difficult for that to happen. <laughs> When there's a will. It wants us to survive our encounters. Yeah, it does. All right, well. They put a big got... red button on there. I pressed it. <laughs> you pushed it. It would be irresponsible not to. <laughs> I'm glad that you did. <laughs>